football. Uh, Ross Dellinger, SI.com. College football leaders are moving closer to recommending clock rule changes meant to reduce plays in games for safety and game length reasons, telling SI now. Under one proposal, gaining wide support, the clock would run after a first down. Now stop, leave it there for a second, uh, please, Garrett. When you used to go out of bounds or there was a first down out of bounds, the clock used to stop. Now, if you get a first down, then there may be with a little bit of time left in each half, basically you do set the ball, the clock starts again. I know they do that in the NFL even faster. I mean, the number of really plays run in the NFL game are very minimal. The other proposals, the four proposals to speed up a game are prohibiting consecutive timeouts, icing the kicker, no untimed down at the end of the first and third quarter. In other words, if there's a, what, defensive penalty or whatever else. Clock runs after first downs except inside two minutes of a half. So in other words, you pick up a first down, they set the change, the clock's never going to stop. Clocks run on incompletions once the ball is spotted. That one's not going to happen. But there, here's one of the things. You know, I, I hope not. This could save either 9 to 15 plays a game. Why are we trying to save plays? Why don't we figure out a better way to shorten halftime? With all due respect to all that goes on at halftime, yes, people need a chance to go get a beer, to go to the bathroom, to get something to eat, whatever. Yes, there's some pageantry at halftime. Figure out a way to shorten halftime by six to eight minutes because the NFL can do it in 12. College football's halftime is at least 20 to 25 minutes, if, if, uh, maybe longer. It's, tw it's 20 on the clock, you know, and then – uh, I mean, maybe there's a little bit of delay on on the back end if you're you're having a big homecoming extravaganza. But uh, number four is not going to happen. I think you throw number four in there so that the ones that make sense, like number three and number two, uh, get passed. Uh, but yeah, they definitely need to shorten halftime. Craig, but which one of those would you if, if if you had to get one of them? If you had to pass one of them, and maybe you like all four, which one of those do you like or not like? Put those uh, back up again, Garrett, if you don't mind. I'm good with the top three. Uh, I don't. I don't agree with number four. I don't think that uh, the the clock should run on incompletions once the ball is spotted. I think that you know that's that's the one that I I feel like most people will be like, no, that's that's going a little bit too far. Um, I mean, half times. I mean, I, I don't really pay that close attention to half times. Honestly, I, I felt like the one at the Super Bowl was too long. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was clearly in, in you know that was a Super Bowl special long halftime and. You know, I'm sure the Chiefs still come back, but there was that chatter about like, man, they'd had that extra time to kind of prepare and get their their stuff together. But, you know, I, I I'm not somebody that's there for halftime, so it's like, how long is it? 20 minutes? Okay, I'll check back in 19 and a half, and let's get back to the game. That's how I am. So, you know, if they shortened it, I I wouldn't probably even blink. Uh, I'd probably notice, but it, it wouldn't be that big of a deal to to me personally. I know that there's other people like they're they're there for halftime, but it is a college football game after all. So. Um, you know, with, with the halftime thing, I'm kind of whatever with, with that. But, yeah, I mean, I think that the uh, the top three are all fine. I mean, the, the consecutive timeouts on icing kicks, uh, I think that that's kind of silly. And, I mean, really with the first uh, – really with that one and um, – I mean, I guess that one. I mean, that one, how often does that even happen? I don't really feel like that. that's that big of a deal. I mean, that's certain situations. It's certainly not every game where you're icing a kicker with back-to-back -back Well, And that happens at the end of the game. So, right. really, you're, you're, what you're doing with that rule is just trying to make sure, like the NFL does, what the NFL wants. And this is – they can say this is about safety all they want, which – is totally secondary and what they really want is they want the first game to go from noon to three right they want the second game to go from three to six three they want 15 to six 315 to, to six, six yeah. to 6 30. but yeah that they want that and for three hours and then they want the next one to go from seven to ten that's what they want yeah that's that so when they're triple header window and they or the games and people flip around they're nice and compartmentalized and good and average and then if people get hurt less because of this bonus but they're you know that's not the most important thing in this. But I think the top two, I mean, those those happen on occasion. Like yeah. so those won't even be in every game is affected by 
consecutive timeouts on icing kicks or untimed downs at the end of the first and third quarter. Like, on occasion, you'll get those, but not necessarily every time. So, like, if they want to throw those in there, that's fine. That'll shave a little time here and there on, you know, not even for every single game necessarily. Um, but the clock running after first downs, except inside of two minutes and a half, I'm all for that. Mm -hmm. I feel like college football does waste an insane amount of time, like, from play to play. Uh, but my biggest my biggest thing is, you know, sitting there and I know I already can feel it will be September. It'll be 103 degrees outside and it'll take 15, 20 minutes to play like, you know, the first three minutes of the first quarter, because in the big 12, there's a instant replay, like four plays in on a fourth and or like on a third and two, we got to stop the game down to get this measurement. It's just, but really it's all the TV breaks. I mean, they shove those in left and right. So you play like three plays, you have like one moment of, of stoppage, and then all of a sudden it's four and a half minute commercial break. Or, you gotta you know, pay, you gotta pay all that million. No, I understand. Uh, yeah. I understand that advertising dollars are why everybody's doing the job that they're doing for the most part, or, or why a lot of people are doing the jobs they're doing, including us. But I mean, there, there's an awful lot of time that, that that you talk about games bogging down. They bog down as much because of the commercial breaks as, as much as anything as far as play goes, in my opinion. But I understand you got to pay bills and you can't eliminate those. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm cool. Like I said, with the first three, I think the that last one though, the clock's running on incompletions. Once the ball is spot, it's not going to fly for for most well, anybody. Okay, how about this? And, and this this is something. A, a couple of things I was going to. First of all, the reviews. I understand turnovers, scoring plays, yeah. critical moments in, in, like, for example, fourth down. But uh, the Big 12 is well known for this. They're and doing I don't third have and ones. Third like, and one early in the game, eight minutes left in the first quarter, yeah. and someone runs out of bounds, and it's third down and one. They give them the first down, or second and eight, they pick up the first down. They'll go back. and some The eye in the sky could help prevent that quickly or whatever. The other part of it is when the offense substitutes – the umpire will not let the uh, the offense snap the ball if the defense wants to substitute. That's now more prevalent than maybe even the reviews and all the other things we're talking about. Yeah, but the clock can be running during that time too, so that's not really uh, costing any time or slowing the game down. It's slowing the offense down, but if the offense substitutes while the clock is running, then, I mean, that that's, that's still – um, that's not that that's not that much of an issue. Number four, the incomplete passes and running the the ball after the ball is spotted. That would end the same way. Remember, and it's been a decade or so ago. They decided that they would keep the clock running yeah. after the kickoff. So if you kick the ball off, and then when you establish possession, they spot the ball, they start running the clock. Well, what they didn't like was at the end of the half, if you scored with 28 seconds left. Then, you, like, catching the ball in a kickoff was no benefit to you because you might only have one timeout because once they set the ball, you, you mean got, a fair catch or whatever? Yeah, I mean, okay. even nothing was, like, yeah. doing anything wasn't really even of a, um, you know, worth it to you. So they got rid of that because it, you know, there no coaches knew how to strategize for, okay, everybody be ready to run out there and do this because the clock's going to run as soon as we're tackled. Or and they spot the ball, and usually you have that time to you know kind of reset and be like, okay, we're going to start with this play here. Yeah, so they changed that well, rule. I think that would same thing would happen on incomplete. Number so three, the definitely for targeting would, a lot of that. Go ahead. Number three would definitely hurry things up. I mean, not constantly stopping the clock for every first down, especially when offenses are clicking first downs like it's nobody's business. They just go, you know, first downs are not the hardest thing in the world to come by. And now, yeah, you can. It's really stretch the clock a long ways when every single first down it's all right stop the clock again first down stop the clock again i mean i think doing that to where the clock doesn't stop outside of yeah those those two minutes would be perfectly fine and that that alone feels like you would shave like 15 minutes off of games because the clock does stop way too often especially when you get some of these offenses that are really clicking and they can have an entire drive and take like 15 seconds off the clock you know <laughs> because they can go the whole field and like barely any time comes off because it's just first down after first down after first down so yeah, obviously that, you'd have to let the sticks get marked you know if well, it's a yeah, 48 but, yard play but i i but, i kind of i was not a i was not for that one but Craig and Paul I kind of don't mind number three as much now yeah I mean I, I just think it's, it's kind of silly to constantly stop the clock every time you register a first down I, I do feel like that happens uh you know, at the high school level I feel like we waste a lot of time with that um and it drags games out far longer than they need to be like especially if you got like a blowout 
and you're just like, just get this game over with, and yet it drags on another half hour because the team just keeps picking up first downs and you keep stopping the clock when really the idea would be just run that bad boy in some situations. But I know this isn't high school football, but like that happens there far too often, I feel like. It's like, just keep the clock running. Do you know that there was a time when the ball went out of bounds that clock stopped until you snapped it again? Yeah. I, I mean, mean they're, they're, they've already sped this thing up a lot, and a lot of it came to where you had this – wide open game i mean like when baylor played during the early years and even during the run with bryles their games were always nearly four hours right well, because and, the clock was stopping so much because they were getting eight to 12 to 15 you know, they were constantly moving the change and they were throwing well, it to get most of that although they ran the ball well, well too what the first down rule does is effectively embrace the rule changes that you've made because you've made rule pr- changes mostly to protect the offense and on every level of oh, football. Okay, yeah, so yeah. every level of football, you've you've made them to protect the offense. So uh, the defense really doesn't have any recourse unless you do speed up the clock, right? You give them less time and less plays. This is something where it can benefit safety and help the defense well. without having to like go, okay, Deacon Jones rules are okay there again. Also, it just embraces the fact that the inverse ratio of – how fast an offense gets first downs and how long a game are are completely opposite. So, you know, if you're a team like Oklahoma runs the spread and can get 12 first downs on a drive, well, that didn't make the game go any faster. In fact, it made it go way longer because your offense is going so fast, you know, this clock stopping all these times, you're just adding minutes to this game in real time, not even on on game clock. I think the, the first two are – going to make minimal difference I mean I think I said that a second ago but I mean those are really not even every week situations that you run into I think uh, the number four is probably universally despised by most so I think number three is really where you probably get your best debate on the the clock running after first downs and that's in my head just thinking about it maybe that's not the best idea I don't know uh, we need to probably sit and stew on it a little bit longer. But just off the top of my head, I do think of like Friday night games and the clock just never, never seeming like it's yeah. rolling because teams are just going first down, first down. Now, the flip side of that is from like a coach's perspective or from, you know, I, I saw some comments of like, well, it's football. I don't want it to end. I don't ever want it to end. <laughs> you know, and I'm looking at it from like a sideline reporter point of view. If I do want it to be, I do eventually, do, I want to go home. I do. Um, but yeah, I mean, for those folks who are like, hey, we only get, you know, college football half the year. I want games to last as long as possible. I mean, I can understand that to an extent, but just because football's on doesn't mean football's fun to fun to always watch. You know no, what I mean? No, there are times. You're time. You're right. There's times. Just get the get the game over with. Yeah. Like, come on. I don't he, care like how much of a, a junkie or whatever the phrase you want to use is. Like, I, I get that. I really do get that. But there's time. Like, just get the get the freaking game over with. Like, come on now. The average game duration. 2018 was three hours and 16 minutes. 2019, the same. 2020 jumped to three hours and 21 minutes. 2021, it went back to 318. Again, three minutes. And then back to 321. Three hours and 21 minutes game time. Not broadcast time, right? Game time from from the time it kicks off until the time ends. uh, Three hours and also 21 minutes, uh, five minutes longer than the average five years ago. So they are kind of now losing grip so, of that three hours and, and 16 minutes. And the other thing about that, so for every one Iowa that's games are probably right about three hours exactly because they don't run games like that, there are 25 Tennessees whose games are going to last 25 minutes longer because of yeah. The way they run right. the offense. You guys know how many more The plays? commercials are still the part, yeah. though. Like that's, that's, that's still going away. Away. Damned if I mean, that's do. the thing. We just in here, t- you know, I, I'm glad we're having the conversation because we can agree or disagree on certain things. But like, like I said, a couple of those are minimal at best. Like you're maybe saving like two and a half seconds on average a year, probably with some of the, I mean, you know what I'm like, the, the icing of the kicker. Like how often do we truly see that? So those I feel like have really – minimal impact it, whatsoever the biggest reason why these games are so long is the dadgum commercials like now, that it, bottom line is that's why the broadcasts are so long if you ice the kicker you can ice the kicker and a minute later start the clock and get let's get going to the play clock but they'll go take a three or four minute break now the uh, fps game see about 2.3 replays stoppages per game that to me i would have lost millions of dollars my home uh, i don't have a home but anything else i own would have lost that i would have thought it was so much more than that now how many more plays 
The NFL game on average is three hours and 10 minutes. There's that little pigeonhole, Paul, that uh, from noon to 315, because they have that 315 start, now even 325. That's the perfect, and then boom, to about 6, 615, 630, and then the night game. How many more plays per game? The NFL is a three-hour and 10-minute game. The college game is 321 right now. How many more plays per game do you think the NFL or the college football runs compared to the NFL? I would say at least 25 to 30. For, say that again. How many more plays per game on average does an FBS game run compared to an NFL game? I don't know, like 15. 25, Paul. Mm. The NFL game averages 155 plays. The average FBS is 180. Remember, in fact, I keep going back to when Baylor ran that offense about as well as you possibly could, and they put up massive numbers, 700 yards, and not even a lot of it was passing, a lot of it was running. They wanted to run 100. They wanted to run 100 plays. They were trying to gas the defense. Go, 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 go. Sometimes it gas themselves, and they couldn't hold well, on to a lead at the end. And, and while the NFL has taken up some of those concepts, the difference between an 85-man roster and a 53-man roster is why, you know, there's going to always going to be less plays in the NFL because even though you're not going to play all 85 of those guys, you still have 20 more people dressed on game day if you needed them and you could take that chance. Um, in the NFL, I mean, like, you know, if you, you – Baylor could run the offense or Tennessee can run that offense because they have six guys who can play wide receiver and you can switch out all that. In the NFL, you might have to make a, 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 a roster decision that week. Like, well, man, we're really short on defensive tackles this week. So we got to make sure that more of those guys are active. So these two wide receivers who haven't caught a pass in eight weeks are just going to sit there. So but we don't have them. Those guys are special teams players. Well, I mean, they might be, yeah. no, they, they, they might also not be on the, right. like you might sit them down because you need, you know, you're down to your last defensive tackle and you need these other three guys. So two wide receivers and a safety sit down and you're rolling the dice on special teams. Our guest lineup today,